Hello, are you a Barrix Xtreme or Streaming Client user and you want to know how to troubleshoot your device, then this video tutorial will help you. I will talk about the following monitoring options. Homepage, Status Report, SNMP Request, SNMP Trap, Berrymon. Let me share my screen with you and start with part number one, the homepage. On the homepage of the streaming client, you can see a couple of live information about the device state. Here you see which URL and which stream is active at the moment. You can see the selected channel. This is important when you use the channel selection feature. You can find information about the used buffer size in bytes and the current selected volume level. And even you see the detected peak levels for audio channel left and right. Here at the bottom you see the relay state, but only if your device has an integrated relay, like my Xtremer 120. This page is updated once per second. That means we are really talking about live information. And when you see a use buffer size above zero byte and moving audio levels, then you can be sure that your Xtremer is receiving and playing an audio stream. Let's give it a little example here. I have a second homepage from my InStreamer, which is currently audio source of the RTP stream here. And when I stop the stream, then it will immediately switch to the, no, to the next URL with an active stream. I stop it now. And you see, it is changing the URL and playing the barracks radio. And you will even see when I switch the device into standby mode. Even that is shown on the homepage. On the top menu of the streaming client, you can find the status button. By clicking the status button, you will get the entire status report. This status report contains very useful information and some of those information you can only find here. Whenever you contact the barracks report because of a problem, then you should copy and paste the status report in an email and send to us. Which information you can find here on the status report? First you see hardware information. You see which device is used followed by IP information. It shows the current IP settings of the device. Next are software information. You see which firmware is loaded and even the software modules. Next is the uptime. Here you see the time since the last reboot of the device. This is followed by streaming status. Next is the IO state. On the I.O. state, you see the state of the integrated relays. On the USB device info, you see detected information from connected SD cards or USB sticks. When you have problems to play audio from your USB sticks, then check here, for example, for device capacity and the file system. If this is not properly detected, then there's a problem with the USB stick. At the bottom, you see the configuration of device. All settings are listed here. Important for the stream monitoring is the streaming status. Here you find information to monitor your streaming quality. When you have, for example, an HTTP internet radio stream, then you should look for the buffer level and even for the last error. This gives you an indication what could be possible problems and how reliable is the stream. When you have an RTP stream, then check here the RTP statistics. This gives you a very good indication of the quality of your stream. Note, 
This page is not updated automatically. It's a one-time request only. Status information from the streaming client you can even request via SNMP. SNMP stands for Simple Network Management Protocol. You can use any SNMP browser like HP OpenView, Node-RED or any other third parties SNMP browser to request the SNMP information from the device. Per default there is no read community password set, but if you want you can configure the password under Configuration, Advanced Settings, Security and here in the SNMP read only community you can set the password. Per default we support the standard MIP and even a Barrix Audio MIP is supported. The Barrix Audio MIP you can find in the Barrix firmware package in the subfolder Update Rescue. There you find the Barrix Audio MIP file. This Barrix Audio MIP file you can install on your MIP browser. On your MIP browser you can request the standard MIP from the Barrix device. When you request the standard MIP, then you get general network information from the device. If you have installed the audio MIP, then you can find this under Private Barrix Audio. And when you request this information, then you get status information about the streaming and even the audio levels are shown here. Beside SNMP request, even SNMP trap is supported. An SNMP trap is an active push information which is sent over network at an event. Such event could be a reboot of the streaming client or a change of the streaming URL. To use SNMP trap, you have to configure the target IP address for the trap. You do that under configuration, advanced settings, remote management, and here in the SNMP settings on trap receiver you configure the target IP address. Let's see how that works. I have here three windows. My streaming client window, my barracks in streamer window which is sending the RTP stream to the streaming client and my trap receiver application. If you have installed the Barrix Audio MIP on your trap receiver, then you get interpreted information that helps to analyze the information sent from the streaming client. We see here that the in-streamer is playing the stream and I can start and stop the stream. And when I stop the stream, then we should here see the change from the URL and even here we should see that the URL is changing. I stop the stream now and you see it is changing to the barracks radio and here in the information we see it's stream number two which is our active now. When I change back, when I activate the stream again Then it's changing back to the RTP stream and we get an information that stream number 1 is active again. Barrymon is probably the most important from this monitoring options because you can check the history with that and it's on the internet so it's from everywhere reachable. To use Barrymon you have to create an account on the Barrymon server. To do that we visit the Barrymon homepage barrymon.net and there you can create the project. There are two different kinds of projects available. There is the private project. The private project is unlimited for the number of devices and it's private. That means nobody can see the data of the devices. But it's not for free. If you are interested, then please send an email to sales at barracks.com. Or you can create a free demo project. The free de demo project is for five devices only and everybody can see the data of your devices. 
to create such demo project, click on create new free demo project and fill in the form and continue here to send the uh, request. Thereafter, you will receive an email notification with the activation link. Please click on this activation link to activate the account. I have done that already, so I can log in directly. My project is AA Barracks and the password. So now under project devices you have to create your device. So we add a device and here we define any name and here we define the MAC address of the device. The MAC address we copy from here for example and then we remove the columns and then the device is created. So now the next thing is we have to configure the device itself. On the device we have to say to which address it should send the Berrymon information. We go to the device homepage, we click on configuration, advanced settings, remote management and here we have the Berrymon URL. And the link for the Berrymon URL you can find in the online help. You can copy and paste this from here. Now we reboot. And as soon as the device is starting playback again, it will send even its first message. The device will send every five minutes or at an event. An event is a reboot or a change of the URL. That means it is playing again. We should see now our first entry from the device. We go to view history on the Berrymon page again. Here we see our test device and here we see when you see this list here then we know we already have received the first data and currently we see not much because we have only one entry. When we go here to the table view we have a graphical view and we have a table view and when we check the table view, then we see the first entry here. With this data you can see a lot, but not when you have only one entry. For that reason I have to create some more entries. And we will not wait five minutes, we will interrupt the stream and then we will get new entries. So for that I have here my in-streamer, which is sending the RTP stream and I stop the stream, it will change here the URL, it is playing now the barracks radio and I start the RTP stream again. So it's going back to the RTP stream and I check on the Berrymon server again. So I request again the data. Now we see here some more data, but uh, the graphical view has a lot of data here. We don't need all. We have uh, currently so much data that we cannot see everything. So the IP address is not needed, the URL is not needed, and we have a few other things even are not needed. Here you have an agenda, what is what, but in my opinion the graphical data 
are not so useful I prefer the table view and here you see what happened here you see the first entry there we have rebooted the uptime this one 8 seconds after reboot 91 seconds after reboot we have changed to URL 2 we have interrupted the RTP stream it was changing to the barracks radio and after 103 seconds it was changing back to URL 1 because I have started the streaming on the in streamer again with this data you can really analyze problems on your streaming. Was this video useful? Please leave a comment below. If you have further questions, then please feel free to send me an email to support at Thanks for watching.